Have you ever hit the wall with cursor? You spend hours babysitting the AI that forgets what you told it just two messages ago. Generates buggy code you have to fix and turns simple tasks into debugging marathons. Is there a better way? I think Andre Kaparthi hit the nail on the head with this tweet. The hottest new programming language is English. Unfortunately, their current AI tools fail in fulfilling this vision. Code remains the main character, while the prompt is off on the side here, scrolling away ephemerally, never to be looked at or used again. So why don't we treat prompts as a programming language? Now let's listen to the CEO of Cursor and hear his thoughts on the limitation of Cursor on large code bases. It doesn't really work. There are lots of nth order effects. You know, if you're dealing with millions of lines of code and dozens or hundreds of people working on something over the course of many years. And so an important chasm for us to cross as a product will be getting to a place where, uh, you know, where the artifact kind of changes. And I think for professional developers, there's still a ways to go there. So why don't we treat prompts as a programming language? Prompt-driven development flips the script. Instead of patching code, you update the prompt and regenerate fresh, clean code every time. So let's see prompt-driven development in action. I have my prompt here, which I'm going to be using both on Cloud Code and on PDD. It's going to allow me to draw on the air using my hand and computer vision. So I'm going to kick both off at the same time, and we're going to do a comparison. So um, prompt-driven development, unlike Cloud Code, is going to focus on the prompt as a source of truth. So what it first starts off doing is figure out what dependencies it needs. And so shortly you should see this file update, it just did, with dependencies. In this case, it identified that it needed MediaPipe for the compute division. It also beefed up the prompt a bit to use MediaPipe. It generated the code file. It's now generating the example, which is an example of how to use it. And then making sure that um, the code and example don't crash and then it's going to go on to verify to make sure that the code and example work as expected according to the prompt. And so it's working on the verification now. And then let me put this in auto mode for cloud code. And then it's going to generate the test. And the test uses a form of verification to make sure that the code actually matches the expected behavior in the prompt. After the test is generated, it's going to make sure that all the code passed the test uh, unit test that it generated. And so it's going to run fix. It's going to fix it all together and make sure it's correct. And then the very last step of all this is that it's going to update the prompt with the latest findings after all the other process that it put it through. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look to make sure if the functionality for both PDD and code work. So let's test out cloud code. It finished and let's see how well it worked. Okay, so here's the generation from Cloud Code. Let's see if it draws. Okay, that lo it looks like it draws. Let's see if it erases. It erases, although it's a little bit hard to see the eraser, but it does erase. And then let's see if it picks a color. Okay, so it looks like it cycles through. So it kind of worked. The only issue was that it's a little bit hard to see the, the eraser. So let me go back to Cloud Code and ask it to fix it. Okay, so I just gave that feedback back to Cloud Code. Then now let's test out PDD's generation. Okay, yeah, so the tracking actually looks a lot better on this. Um, let me see if I could select the colors. It looks like I could select the colors. Yep, okay, let's, and I could erase. Okay, yeah, so this is a lot nicer. This looks like it was pretty flawless. Okay. Good, so I think PDD was all correct. Let's see how Claude is doing. Okay, so Claude just finished. Let's check it again. Okay, so here's the uh, Claude code demo. Hopefully the racer is better. Let's see. 
Okay, yeah, so I can see the eraser now, which is good. Although it leaves like a little residue or something. The drawing is good, although I do kind of wish I could <laughs> see it on top of me instead. But okay, it works. Let's see if I could select. Yep, it looks like it cycles through, which is good. Okay, it's not quite as nice of an interface. Um, okay, well, I think to make it perfect, uh, let's have it fix the residue. Let's just fix it. I think that's probably going to be good enough. Okay, let me tell me show you the files that it generated. Yeah, so it generated, of course, the file that we ran. Um, oh yeah, th and then the prompt, if you look at the, the last part, the last step update, so you see from a one-liner, it made a much more extensive prompt. So this prompt allows us to regenerate the code and have it be consistent. So. It has all the details of what was generated in the code, and it also has the dependency here. Okay, Cloud says it fixed it. Let's check it out. Okay, is it fixed? Oh, good. Okay, no more residue. It draws. Yep. It erases. That's good. And it cycles through. Okay, good. So it looks like it looks like it got it working now. So let's look at the final results here. Okay. So this looks like it's been almost a dollar. It's about four minutes and 28 seconds of API time. This is a comparison to PDD, which is about 22 cents and about a minute, 42 seconds. So it's, it's about maybe two to three times faster and about five times cheaper for compare results. Although I think the PDD in this case did a nicer job in the user interface and usability. And I had to spend a lot more time going back and forth with Claude to, to make it work nicely. So let me show you what powers PDD. Every time we run PDD, all the, all the code passed the test, what it does is it uploads that unit, the prompt, the example, the unit test, as well as the code to the database. And these databases are used as reference. So as you know, context is king with LLMs. The better few shot examples you have, the better results you get. And this also is what enables very consistent results from PDD. You have a choice here where let's, let's say if you have uh, something uploaded, but it's very sensitive, you can exclude it. You can make sure that other people can use it. Or if it's something that's not good, you can also make sure that you don't use it yourself. Uh, what you could also do is pin things. Let's say there are some things from the marketplace that are really useful for your code development. You could pin them, so it's more likely to be used in your project. Um, but you can also exclude it. So like if, let's say, it doesn't give you good results, or if, if there are some people that don't produce good few shot examples, you can exclude people from being used in your few shot examples. But it's also a way to make money. And as other people use it, you could charge, you could set whatever price you want. We take 30% of the earnings, but you get 70%. And so you could actually make money. Or you could even not have to pay for API costs because the money, whatever money you make here offsets that and needing extra, we have the ability for you to take it in USDC. So this is a little behind the scenes about how PDD works. And this is still very much on a waiting list. So if you're interested, sign up for our waiting list and you can get access. This eliminates the need to have your own keys. Right now, PDD uses about 15 different LLMs. And by using the, the cloud hosted version, you don't have to have so many keys. We take care of that for you. Now that you've seen prompt driven development in action, let's see it on a more real world test case. In this test case, what we're doing is we're comparing prompt-driven development versus cloud code. And this example is more substantial. This one is taking in natural language instructions and then editing files. So it's using an LLM. We're using Sonnet 3.7 in this example. And we're using a text tool called Text Editor that's built into Sonnet 3.7. We're using cloud code to basically vibe code it. So this can insert it in. It will use the cache. It will use the thinking tool. It will edit files of arbitrary sizes. So it's a fairly significant program. We did the same program inside of prompt-driven development. And when we did that, what we found out was that prompt-driven development had a perfect success rate. So every single edit 
that we submitted, it was able to do completely and correctly. Odd code only was able to get about a bit less than 50% passing. This is a kind of a head-to-head -head comparison. Uh, prompt driven development completed all of them. Cloud code only did about half of them. This is the execution time. So when we benchmarked the resultant program, how much time it took to run the test suite, it was about 50 seconds for a cloud code and about 38 or so seconds for prompt driven development. So prompt driven development was faster. And then in terms of cost, cloud was about 35 cents and prompt driven development was about nine cents. So way cheaper. The amount of lines of code was about 9,000 718 for problem driven development and about 7,159 for cloud code. Uh, this led to a slightly higher cost for problem driven de development and then cloud code to where we stopped it was about $28. Of course, if we kept on going with cloud code, we could have probably got a 100% pass rate, but then this number would have been substantially higher. Here's the total execution time in terms of regenerating all of the code. So it was about 6 hours and 18 minutes for cloud code. It was about seven hours and five minutes for prompt driven development. Again, uh, cloud code didn't fully pass. So. so here's a quick summary of the results. Prompt driven development passed all the results. Cloud code passed less than half. Prompt driven development in general made more performed code. So it was about 37 seconds versus 50 seconds. So 1.3x faster. Uh, in terms of average cost per task, prompt driven development was about eight cents versus 36 cents. This is for edits. It's almost 4.6 times cheaper. And then the cost per successful task, about a 10x difference, 9.82, cheaper with prompt driven development. They both had the same exact test suite, so 45 different tests. And the creation cost for prompt driven development was a bit higher at $29.92 versus $28, so a bit higher. There were more lines of code for prompt driven development. All the details here are actually published in our white paper, which hopefully by the time this video is out, you'll see. To summarize, using an ejected coder like cursor or cloud code, in a large and long-lived code base is like throwing a grenade. You're not sure what's going to change, get added, or deleted. Prompt-driven development gives you control so you can regenerate with deterministic results and higher performance. Give PDD a try by running UV tool install PDD-CLI and like and subscribe to see more content on prompt-driven development.